right, let's see. This one. Ah, yeah. All right, welcome to the Daily BA. My name is Ryan O, and today we've got the Skinner Trifecta, or the three pack. First of all, Skinner had a lot of content. I think it was around 280 or 300 publications, so I'm doing it down to just a few. Remember that. These represent something important to me as it relates to Skinner's work. The first one, About Behaviorism, published in 1974, all right? Now he had a lot of other publications before here. I'm gonna read them for you really quick. The Behavior of Organisms, an Experimental Analysis, 1938, Walden 2 in 1948, a utopian sort of novel. Signs and Human Behavior, which is included in my three pack. Verbal Behavior, not in the three pack. Schedules of Reinforcement with Furster, 1957. Cumulative Record, which was republished a couple different times, originally in 1959. The Analysis of Behavior in 1961 with Holland. Technology of Teaching, 1968. Contingencies of Reinforcement, a theoretical analysis in 1979. And Beyond Freedom and Dignity in 1971, which is in my three pack. So, about behaviorism, it represents his philosophy, radical behaviorism, radical meaning all encompassing, not on the fringe or outside or kind of pushing it and that, that sort of sense of the term. Next on the three pack, 1971, Beyond Freedom and Dignity. And in 1953, Science and Human Behavior, which has been published and republished a number of times. I believe there's a free copy on the BF Skinner Foundation's website. I'll link that. So let's take a dive into these, ready? All right, we will go in order. So, start with science and human behavior. You can see it's a little bit worn. That is mainly because it travels everywhere. It has in the past. This is actually my buddy's copy because I loan mine out and I, I hand them off. What I wanted to do is just a quick glance at the table of contents, okay? So you'll notice here that there are main sections. These main sections are first being the possibility of a science of human behavior. This was a very different thing to be proposing at the time period, so it's very crucial to set the stage. Section two, the analysis of behavior, it looks at different terms and concepts and starts to lay that foundation of what he means when he talks about an analysis of behavior. Section three is something that is often critically missed, I think, and that is how all of this comes together. That is the individual as a whole. It is not just one part of the organism, but is all of the different interactions of these variables. Key, many people forget this. Now, when you get into the other sections, this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. So the behavior of people in groups or these larger cultural units and levels. These are things like government and law, religion, psychotherapy, education, economic control. It's very interesting from the cultural perspective of these larger institutions and potential controlling variables. And the last section uh, highlights a word control that I don't enjoy as much, mainly because of advances in how we talk about these things. I think controlling is hard to do perfectly, like it's, it's I would argue, impossible. Um, and it's also not very, but it also kind of hits on this issue of dignity. That'll be for another video. And so think of these of kind of a wrap up of the possibilities of influencing human behavior on a very large scale. All right, so that's the first one. Now let's take the one that was published next, Beyond Freedom and Dignity. This is a very, very controversial book. In my experience, if people have read something of Skinner's, it is typically this book, and it doesn't always mean that they had the best taste in their mouth after they were done reading it. Now, mine's inscribed here, it says you're a damn badass. Thanks, Mark Malady, appreciate it, man. This is the first book that was gifted to me, and it kind of piggybacks off of those things that I talked about in Science and Human Behavior, freedom and dignity. He pushes the boundaries on what it means to have these sort of things, and there's some other implications as well. Now, my second favorite part of this book is he provides summaries at the end of each chapter. So one thing that I do frequently is I come back, look at that, I turn perfectly to it. One thing that I do often is I come back and I just read these short summaries, and what they do is provide me just with a reminder of essentially what the book had to say, but <laughs> that's not good enough to do just on its own. All right, that was the second one. Now let's look at about behaviorism. So. Skinner built from the ground up with his data. Now, that said, you need to have some sort of philosophical foundation to be able to rest your different theories and data upon. And About Behaviorism was his attempt to do that. 1974, this was published. One thing that was really, really cool about it is in the first chapter, now, 
Mind you, he was he was hit with a lot of different questions about the implications of books and things that he that he had posited in these different books. And so he lays out on pages four and five 20 different commonly stated things about behaviorism or the science of behavior. And he says that he believes that they are all wrong and that the book throughout the reading of it will provide justification for why those are wrong. And so the next question comes as to what do you do if these books are difficult to read? Some people say that this isn't the first place to start reading Skinner. There are much better arguments and books, in my opinion, to start depending on the type of person that is interested. Mind you here, we're talking about behavior analysts, people interested in Skinner's work. So I read these a few different times, once as an undergraduate, once as a graduate, and then I have read parts of them or them all in their entirety a third time after graduate school. And one thing is I get something different from them every time. You look at it and you read at it with a different history. So it's very interesting to do that. Some very well-known behavior analysts have told me that they read, that they have read some of these works yearly, every year for 20 plus years. Now some, but not all of these were actually included coursework in my programming. And I don't think that they're included in every single program out there. Oftentimes they are additional readings or they're, they're more slated for your PhD programs, but they're extremely valuable and very important when it comes to the history of behavior analysis and understanding the roots of our field. And so the question comes as to what do we do if these are difficult reads? Well, one strategy that worked for me is I would read the harder readings first, maybe a chapter, let's say, out of one of these books, and I would push through it. If I didn't understand things, I'd write them down and figure out what it is that I wanted to, to ask a supervisor or such, and I would try to read them with other people as well. And those people were either at the same skill sets relatively of me or above my skill sets so they could help me out. And that's a model that's been used in many different areas of our field. Now, I said it's important to push through and generate your questions, that would be a place where I would come together, say weekly with those folks, and we'd ask each other questions and try to answer it, but we'd always make sure to bring it back to a supervisor or mentor of some sort. And so this is where you all come in. I selected these three because they were important to me and they are all crucial books when it comes to Skinner's legacy. But I wanna dive into each of these individually a little bit more, and this is where you will come in. So with each of these books, one, two, and three, what did you like most about them? What did you not like about them? What did I miss when it came to a little bit of my overview? Is there any suggestions you'd have for people that are reading it? All of that's fair game. I will do an individual episode on each of these three. And after you commented that, then you can go in and comment about other books. If you might've disagreed, I was still like, why I selected the three that I selected. All right, if you like this content, please make sure that you like it. It actually makes a difference. Check out the links below. That's where I have everything if you wanna pick up one of these books and if you aren't already, please hit that subscribe button, check back in, and let me know what you thought below. And with that said, this is your Daily Bee.